somebody and tell them God is up to something. God is up to something. God is up to something. God up to something. God up to something. God up to something. Whether you know it or not, the mere fact that you're alive is a blessing. Yes. I mean, they don't bury old people. They don't bury young people. They bury dead people. So whether you think you got time or not, you know, I've been sitting up thinking to myself that every one of us, whoever you are, have an appointment with death. It's appointed unto man once to die. After then is judgment. I've been really thinking about that today. I mean, a lot of times we go to church, we go to funerals, and we look at people there, and we don't really think to ourselves that one day, that's going to be you. The only thing about life that is sure is death. That's the only thing about life that sure is death. You know, you were born, but just like you were born, you're going to die. Right. Everybody. Yeah. One thing about death, that's one appointment you can't break. Right. You know, if, if you schedule a doctor's appointment or any other kind of appointment, you can break those appointments. But one appointment that you cannot break is death. So since death is sure to come, the only thing you ought to do is get ready for it. And whether you believe this or not, I hear people say all the time, you got time. You got a chance to get it right. You know those people in Paris yesterday who got killed in that theater thought they had time. Or those little children at Sandy Hook Elementary thought they had time. The people at Columbine think they had time. All over the world, people think you got time. But the person next to you that you're looking at Tonight, maybe Listen, people, time. God, my battery going low, so I might not get everything. I'm okay with death. Tell people all the time, if you say you know Jesus, and you are not, and you afraid to die, you don't know it. You know, I fly private. God gave me my own plane. So when I get up there and fly, I have to believe God. I mean, I got a pretty good vibe. I don't know where he at. He can go over there. Got a black man. <laughs> but uh, you don't know when you fly. You don't know what's gonna happen. God bless you. God bless you. Listen, my battery, my battery going down. Is I die? I got like fifteen percent. But y'all pray, I get everything. Because when you belong to Jesus, to live is Christ. But to die is gain. I'm not talking to everybody, because some of you, what I'm saying, sound funny. You don't know Jesus. If you were to die tonight in hell, you would live. I don't know if nobody is recording or not. I'm the only one, one, one here who look like it. But it's amazing. You know, if there's He's a out there in the car. We in, we in like in a, in a, in a coliseum. If there's a good, we there's are the a Coliseum man. in Birmingham. And if there's a heaven, there got to be a heaven. Whether you believe you're going there or not, I don't want to take that chance. Yes, she is. Yes, she is here. But I want to talk to about a hundred born again folk who just in love with Jesus. <laughs> and you know without a shade, glory, without a shadow of a doubt, that in heaven or Jesus was to split the sky. Yes, you do got time to make it. He's I, at the cross place, Birmingham cross, cross place. He really just got up. That's all he, knows. he just got here. But I didn't want that life. You know, I wanted God. And I tell you, serving the Lord pays off. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. I, I look at other people that the lifespan of sin is not long. Romans 6 23. For the wages of sin is death. Whenever there's sin in your life, you're going to pay for it. 
See, sin is going to make you pay. It'll hold you longer than you're willing to stay. It costs you more than you're willing to pay. That's what sin will do. Amen. Sin Come on. It's like a blood clot in the vein. It's like a splinter in the flesh. It's like an object in your eye. If you don't deal with it, it's going to deal with you. I don't know they are. No. But I, I, I made up in my mind that I wanted God. I mean, as much as I look forward to heaven, if heaven was never promised to me, neither God's gift to live eternally. It's been worth just having the Lord in my life. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. Let me tell you something. If heaven isn't in the picture, I still will stick with God. Because there's no peace like the peace of God. People have money. I'm, I'm trying to hold the sun. I want to holler so bad. I just knew a man in California, one of the richest men in California, owns the biggest home in California, was invited to go to his daughter's funeral. There are more time bigger there, and his daughter just committed suicide. Money can give you a whole but it can't give you peace of mind. It can't give you happiness. I mean, if you're dying right now with cancer, your money can't heal you. But I know a man that can do anything with you. His name is Jesus. I'm not talking to everybody, but I'm talking to everybody that's just glad to know Jesus for real. I want you for the next 30 seconds to open your mouth and give God praise. No, he's not here. I want you to catch it. I want you to catch it. Everybody can praise him. Now, everybody can't worship. That don't belong to everybody. You understand? They that worship him, go 24 John, must worship him in what? Spirit and truth. See, everybody can't worship. But everybody can't praise. Why? Okay. The prostitute can praise him. That the last night she slept with didn't give her AIDS. The drug dealer can praise him. That the last time he went and dealt drugs, he didn't get busted. The drug driver can praise him. That the last time he was riding down the street drinking, God kept him and spared him. Now let me help you. The books say, let everything that have breath. Is promise. You feel like you've got to have shoes on your feet. You know, I'm just so grateful for little stuff. You know, walking through the house today, and I said, God, I show sure thank you for Laura's season song. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You know, they got fishes and they got Laura's. Yeah. Got Laura's. You know, I'm just appreciating God for black pepper.
I'm going to let y'all see until my battery go dead. It's already was on 15%. So y'all shut up broadcast.
joking, right? Like for real. Okay. You in trouble, man. Like for real. Okay, well, number two. Tony Romo. Number one. Injured Tony Romo. Dallas Cowboys. I see the blue. I'll pass. 
that's all for you. Hallelujah. Slap somebody and say, thank God for the blood. Come on, you're sitting next to a Baptist. Find a Pentecostal real quick and tell them, thank God for the blood. So that's what the Lord said to me. Next year will be year of unusual death. So that's on January the 1st. But then on January the 2nd, you can't get down the 1st. You can get down the 2nd, get down the 2nd. Because on the 2nd of January, I'll be praying for everybody in the building. Lay your hand. Yes, Lord. I'll be laying hands, praying for everybody, speaking in everybody's life, to claim the word of the Lord for their life on January the 2nd. Me, uh, Dr. Kim Daniels, the Pastor John, the Kim Carter. I think it's just going to be crazy. We're going to pray with that to your hand and get the devil at you. Praise God. So it's just going to be an awesome, awesome, so if you can't meet me in Charlotte, North Carolina, now, um, you don't have to bring this up. Everything is free. But if you plan on coming, just call the number. Uh, or go to the website and just say, I plan on coming. And they ain't going to say, they don't see you. But call and say, you come out. Make that shit. But uh, you know, but I, I want you to call in and just let us know you're coming. And uh, there's only 2,500 seats, and over 2,000 people have already registered. So I want you to call and get in. You, you know, whenever I do my own prophetic meeting, you can't get in the building for calling on the outside. So come with an expectation to receive from God. Amen. Amen. Lift your hands just a moment. Close your eyes. Father, we need you tonight. I need you more than I've ever needed you before. I need you to lay your hands on me. And not just on me, every person represented in this show. Let the presence of the Holy Ghost in a church this end this I 
Corinthians, uh, no, 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 uh -huh. First Corinthians 13 and 11, what does it say? When I was a child, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. Uh-huh. I understood as a child. Yeah. I thought as a child. So those are the three levels to determine a person's maturity. The way they talk, the way they understand, and the way they think. Say it with me. That's how you determine a person's maturity. How they talk, how they understand, and how they think. A lot of people, all you got to do is listen to a person long enough, and it'll tell you how childish they are. First of all, God said, uh, uh, Paul said, when I was a child, I spake as a child. All right. First of all, you got to change the way you talk. But you cannot change the way you talk until you first change the way you think. How about 23 and 70 class, as a man, somebody read your Bible. As a man what? As a man what? What? So is it. So you can never live above your thought life. If it ain't in your mind, it'll never be in your future. You got to think you there before you get there. Am I making sense? It got to already be in your mind. You can't think in the basement and live in the attic. However you think is the way you're going to act. And the problem is a lot of times you're trying to get people to change the way they act, but you can't change the way a person act until you change the way a person thinks. Let me help you. Now, my mama, I take care of my mama. My mama don't work. My daddy don't work. Don't nobody work in my family, okay? I'm going to take care of everybody, all right? Now, I, I need y'all to say this now. My mama... She, she, I, I, no, well, she, she didn't know about this until, until, until I told her about it. But there's a certain name brand that I like my mama's wear called St. John. Yeah. Yeah. St. John, you know, is a classic. You know, that's what the that's what the president's wife be having on. Okay. Now the top, the top of a St. John is fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred dollars, sometimes three thousand dollars, just the top. The bottom is eight hundred to fifteen hundred. Okay. So when you buy that, you're going to spend $5,000 for one outfit. That's my mom. She deserves it. I don't care if you don't like it. Don't dislike me. Get like me. Don't be hating on me. Don't dislike me. You better get like me. All right, now listen. Now, that's one outfit. So, you know, I brag my mama, my mama had an outfit. Somebody came with me. They said, I want you to take this shopping where you take your mom. I said, okay, come on, let's go. So we went to Charlotte, it was a place in Charlotte, on Pelham, in the mall, they had St. John. I took them in the mall, we went in there, they started looking at price tag. But when they did that, I knew they had no business in there. <laughs> Certain stores, if you don't look at the tag, if you gotta look at the tag, you can't afford to be there. <laughs> so I'm in there, and we looking at it, and while we looking, she walked over to me, she said, come on, join hands with me. I said, all right. She said, we been to pray. I said, what we praying for? She said, we believe in God, they gonna put these clothes on sale. <laughs> so I joined hands with her. Said, Come on, let's pray. So I joined hands with her, and we get ready to pray. Now we're in the middle of the St. John store, about to go in. I mean, we about to speak in tongues and everything. So I grabbed her hand and said, Come on, let's pray. We pray. And in the middle of the pray, the Holy Ghost say, Tell her. Is jacked up. So I look at her. I say, ma'am, I know you want to pray, but the Holy Ghost say your thinking jacked up. She say, why? I said, it's your thinking is messed up because you believe that God can put the clothes on sale, but you don't believe he can give you enough money to pay for it at the original price. Now try it again. It's because of your thinking. Somebody say, change the way you think.
So my faith now is hold on the same God that can give me coach. Can give me first class. So guess what I started doing? I started sitting in first class before I had the ticket for it. I get on the plane to sit in first class. They thought it was my seat. They didn't know I was sitting in somebody else's seat. Until it was time. Like I had to go to the bathroom and never came back up there. Yeah, you got to fake it till you make it. Come on, you got to act like you're blessed even when you ain't got a dime in your pocket. Don't go to think you a millionaire because you act like one and you ain't got it. Why? Because you're preparing for your future. Let me help somebody in here. You want to know how you know you've been called to be blessed? Wave your hands. Say, I want to know. Wave your hands. Say, I want to know. When you got haters and you ain't even got nothing, you must be going somewhere. When you got folk hating on you and you ain't even got nothing. Okay, so, so guess what I say? I saw believing God in first class. And guess what happened? I saw sitting in first class. And first class is wonderful, y'all. Just when you go overseas. Don't ever go overseas and coach. That's the devil. Coach is for cattle. They give you a bed. That brother said, Jesus, that's, I want you to get heaven by this thing, man. They give you a bed. They feed you real good food. I mean, it'd be good at first class. So I say, hey, this is wonderful. I'm a million miles. I got a million miles of Delta. I'm dying. They treat you real good. Hmm. I say, this is wonderful. Until I got around people who had their own plan. Y'all might catch on what I'm saying. And guess what? I got my own plan now. Y'all trying to get you to understand something. But it don't happen until you change the way you think. I didn't come from no money. I ain't nobody leave me nothing at all. You know the Bible? You the Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance to his children. But well, my dad was in the streets. He wasn't thinking about me at the time. So did nobody leave me nothing. But I had a mama that knew the word of God. And I worked this Bible and said, God, you are not a respectable person. If you did it for them, you can do it for me. I prophesy that everybody under the sound of my voice that want to be better, that want to go better, you will accept.